Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this uh, Sapphire Systems uh, webinar on Spindle Professional. Uh, today we've got myself, Paul Calladine, uh, we've got, uh, and we've got uh, Tom Bevan on the line, who's from Greater. He's the Channel Development Management for Sapphire. We're going to be assisting you today with this uh, this webinar. Hello. And today we're going to talk about Spindle uh, Professional, a um, very popular subject at the moment at Sapphire. Um, lots of clients looking at making cost reduction, cost savings um, in their businesses and also some of the recent uh, increases by Royal Mail. We're talking to a lot of companies about how we can try and save costs uh, in terms of distributing documents. So I'm going to begin by just doing some uh, slides and go through uh, to introduce the product itself. And return, on, uh, return on investment examples. We've got plenty of time for questions uh, before we leave you. We should be finished well within uh, the hour allotted for this webinar. Okay, so just to begin. Well, many of us are still printing and posting uh, business documents. So I know most of you use Sun Systems, and I guess that would Examples of that would include things like sales invoices, uh, any purchase orders that are being raised from Sun Systems statements, remittances. But the key message from today is that it's not just Sun Systems documents we're talking about. We're talking about documents from any uh, any other system, any system that can print. So, for example, Microsoft Office or a payroll application or any app that you've got in the business that you're producing business documents from that you want to then uh, distribute. Um, to customers or suppliers, etc., those could be uh, automated through the product spindle that we're going to show you. And printing, well, that's become increasingly expensive. If we think about the types of costs that we have when we're printing documents out, we've got uh, expensive printer toner, expensive paper, um, envelopes, and spare complement slips, that kind of thing. Royal Mail recently put the prices up uh, significantly, so we're now looking at between sort of 50 and 60 pence for uh, second and first class. Posting can also be pretty unreliable too, so there's no real uh, proof that we've actually sent the document to somebody apart from if we're going to go for, again, additional cost uh, services like special or recorded delivery. And if we're really honest, no one particularly likes having to do the job of printing and stuffing the envelopes and distributing distributing them out by post. So what can uh, what can Sapphire offer its customers? Well that's what we want to introduce. A product called uh, Spindle Professional. It's been on the market for a good long while and used with, predominantly with companies uh, using financials or CRM applications. But as we said at the start, it's uh, very independent to any application that can print. At its heart, it's an actual uh, intelligent Windows printer driver. Uh, it allows us to distribute documents um, intelligently as well. So pick up variables that are on those documents, such as email addresses, uh, if you've got them. But alternatively, it's able to fax them uh, to customers or suppliers. And if failing that, we can also print them out uh, and distribute them uh, manually. It allows us to apply a corporate um, template or logo to our documents. Um, so we're going to have a look at some of those examples. That, again, could be quite sophisticated, so we could be using different templates based on uh, different uh, customers that we're dealing with, perhaps, or depending on the data itself um, that's being produced. So if it's a statement, uh, it could use one particular branding if it's overdue, or um, another branding if it's, uh, if it's inside your payment terms. And also, we're going to have a, have a look at how we can archive documents, so not just distributing them and sending them out the business, but also keeping an archive copy locally, perhaps uh, just in the file system, or uh, anybody using SharePoint out there, we can automatically save documents uh, to SharePoint directly. So if we look at a quick example here um, about Spindle Professional, over on the left here, we're going to print our documents from our various Windows applications. 
and that's going to get sent to our Spindle Pro print driver. And as an example, this could automatically, as one seamless process, email perhaps uh, a copy to a recipient. It could fax uh, a copy to somebody who hasn't got an email. And likewise, it could print out a copy um, for those with no fax or email. We could automatically archive that onto a network drive or onto our SharePoint server. And that could be an automated process just from uh, one click. So why are we looking at Spindle Professional? Well, as we said at the start, cost savings are a big topic at the moment. And this product helps us to uh, reduce our cost savings significantly, not just in the delivery uh, of those uh, documents, so replacing a posted output, but also replacing perhaps the cost of pre-printed stationery uh, and envelopes, etc. And also, because the process can be uh, automated, we can reduce some of the human error and make sure documents that perhaps have multiple recipients uh, are sent to people correctly with an archive copy uh, for backup as well. And I think Tom's going to show us as well how we can also uh, incorporate things like terms and conditions. Um, so maybe if it's a purchase order, you might want to attach your T's and C's to a document output. But in addition to the output of a purchase order, you might want to send out uh, a subsequent attachment or perhaps something that's uh, seasonal or promotionally related. So we've got a number of cost savings that we can achieve. And we're going to come back to this at the end and show you some, uh, some actual examples. We can also help you to improve communication, so make sure that the documents are being saved uh, locally. So if it's a remittance advice and you want proof of that, and you want to save it locally, then you could uh, upload that to your network drive uh, or to SharePoint, even send a copy to um, somebody who raised the invoice. We've got the green tick, so uh, by saving on uh, paper and um, uh, pre-printed stationery, we're helping to reduce the, uh, the amounts of uh, you know, damage to the environment and we're also help, helping you to promote uh, brand identity so if you've got things like uh, changes to your logos or changes to addresses anything that would normally go on to pre-printed stationery because we're using an electronic template then we can replace those images uh, very quickly uh, if anything changes to your sort of corporate branding etc Okay, so without further ado, we're going to give you a demonstration. Here we're going to show you an example uh, using some systems. So we're going to show you a, a remittance example. But Tom's going to show us also um, using something other than some systems, so just another other Windows application. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to uh, Tom Bowen and just pass him control. Hi there, guys. Can you hear me okay? Am I still on mute? I can hear you fine, Tom magic. Okay, so we'll start off with something fairly familiar, which will be Sun Systems. Yes. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to run through a few different types of automation. So <clears throat> one document that's really common for Sun Systems people that's a pain to get out of the building in a, in a much more cheap way is, is things like remittances, payment documents. So what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is take a batch of documents and we're going to automate them through Spindle. So as Paul mentioned, the key thing with Spindle, there's a number of different benefits like brand, like making things look better, like making things quicker process, but the real key benefit is that we're going to save a lot of money by delivering documents automatically by email rather than by printing and posting things. So I'm just going to go through a process. I'm just going to do some reprints of some remittances here, but obviously it wouldn't really matter what you're going to be doing. It's just a quicker process for me rather than having to create a whole new batch. And what you'll notice is the key thing with Spindle is there's, there's no real training required. It's a one-click process. So what we've got here is a is a print preview of the report. Now, what you might notice is there's some extra little commands in here. These are what we call hash hash commands. And the hash hash commands basically used for kind of harvesting data from within the report writer. So it's really simple. That's all we add to a document. Now, for your documents within your own system, you're not going to see them. They'll be tucked away and uh, hidden away so you won't see them. But this is just for us to explain how it would work. So all I'm going to do is hit the print button and print it to Spindle. So you've basically just had Spindle user training, which is pretty quick, I know. One of the things people like about it is that it means that we can move to a much, much quicker process. Now, what you'll start seeing now is Spindle picking up the documents and automating them out. So now what we've got, Spindle's taken the remittance. It's turned it, first of all, into a PDF. And then it's also sent it with a nice professional-looking HTML email. So Spindle's done a number of things. Because we're using those hash hash commands, 
and we're harvesting that data, we can then start to use that data to do a number of different things with it. So for example, we can pick up that data and embed it into a nice professional looking HTML email that carries your corporate identity. Now this could be for remittances, it could be for invoices, statements, purchase orders, whatever document you want from virtually any system that you have. So we can kind of carry a much more consistent image. And um, most companies I'm talking to tend to um, have nice websites now and nice marketing collateral. And then when you start dealing with a company, most of the documents that you receive are coming from an accounts department, which don't always carry that high level of design. What we're trying to do is make it very, very easy for people to do that at a very low cost. So what Spindle's done here is you've got our brand, we've got relevant contextual information. It's pulled through things like the company's name, uh, the account code, the recipient, the date, timestamp, the company it's being sent from, and also, importantly, if I'm doing a remittance, the amount I'm paying you. And that's been embedded into the document here. Now what happens, if we have a look at the document itself, we don't actually change the text of the document. All we do is we lay behind it backdrops or stamp in front of it overlays to make it look and feel pretty much however we want it to look and feel. So we can have multiple backdrops, multiple overlays to give it a much more kind of, um, much more commercial feel to it. Now this is a really simple document. A remittance doesn't need to be too fancy. So we've got a real quite straightforward basic document here. But what we'll do in a minute, we'll come out of Sun Systems and we'll start showing you some documents from a more generic system and we'll show you some of the more fancy things we can do with the documents. Okay? So that's my document emailed. We could, if we want to, fax the document. I'll come and show you faxing in a minute. But a really important thing is how we can also then archive documents and make them available to other people. Now, some of you may use different means of archiving documents. You may use things like a document management system. You may use things like SharePoint. You may use things like uh, CRM. Spindle can integrate with all of those systems. So, for example, if you have a CRM system, if you're using something like Dynamic CRM, we can automatically create activities against the contacts within CRM. If you're using things like uh, SharePoint, Spindle can automatically create SharePoint libraries. And then because we're harvesting that data, we call it metadata, because we're harvesting that data, we can then index against that data into SharePoint automatically. Here's a real simple example of it using a network drive. So Spindle can create me a, a network path here. So the path is going to be C slash Sunbank slash remittances slash PK1. Then what it does is it sees a new company, and it will automatically create me the new folder for that company. What it can then do as well is it can automatically name the folder structure and the folder substructure on the fly without me having to do anything. And then really cleverly, it can also automatically name the documents based on what you're telling it to, which is again based on that data that's coming out of the document itself. So if I look at the document, it's archived as a carbon copy of exactly what was sent to my customer originally. OK. Um, is everyone on mute? I don't know if anyone can ask questions on at this stage. Um, was that right, Joe? Everyone's on mute, are they? Cool, okay. We'll open up to questions at the end if you like. If anyone has a question they really want to ask at the moment, you can always drop them in the chat window as well as the question. Try to get a bit of feedback there as well. So what we'll do now then is we'll now go and do some document runs from a different system. So I'm going to come out of the sun now and I'm going to do some document designs, uh, some document emails just from a really familiar system again. So I'm going to use Microsoft Word this time. Now. Microsoft Word is probably the easiest way to explain Spindle because it means we're not pulling data from complex tables. It's just a real simple document. Now, again, what we'll do, we'll do a statement this time. Like I said, it doesn't really matter what document we're choosing, where the document comes from. What matters is that if it's a Windows application and it can print, then Spindle can work with it. Again, I've left my commands here visible so you can see what we're doing. But effectively, what we're doing is a mail merge here. Now, normally, we'd take away these commands so they're invisible, but it helps you understand what we're doing. We have like a command which picks up a value, and then our little hash hashes tell Spindle to pick it up and then use it. So hopefully, that's not too complicated. So what we're going to do, I'm going to just merge this to my printer. So I'm going to do a statement batch. And I'm going to hit the print button, and I'm going to print it to Spindle Pro Auto. So using Spindle is no more complicated than just using a straightforward printer that you do every day. The cool thing is, is rather than you having to go to a printer, pick up tons of paper, stick it in the post, and wait for a couple of days for it to get what it's got to go to, whilst paying for the privilege, you can hit one button, automatically Spindle's taken that document, branded it, made it look nice, automated it to the right person in the right format in the right way. So for example, some of these documents are going to go by email. Some of them are going to go by fax. Some are going to be printed and posted still. And also, we can start archiving and indexing things to different places all at the same time. And all we ever do is one mouse click. So I hope you remember earlier on we were talking about us kind of harvesting data or picking up bits of data from the report or from the host application. 
I'm doing a little bit more with my statement here because I'm picking up extra things. I'm not just picking up the recipient's name, the customer's name, the account reference. I'm also picking up things like the aging criteria, so the, the aging buckets that we're sitting in. So these guys are current. So I've got four four thousand seven hundred and seventy five pounds, which is current, nothing really overdue yet. So if I have a look at the statement design. Again, so this is a different company I should explain. We can make the document look and feel however we want based on variable dynamic data. So for example, I've got within this company multiple different divisions, and each division has a different brand to it. So I've got Homestyle Construction, I've got Homestyle DIY, I've got Homestyle Trade, and each one of those, in my case, just has a different color brand to it. So you can choose the different stationary layouts dependent upon variable data. And in this case, I'm using what we call an analysis code, which you know, you've got analysis codes or analysis dimensions within Sun. We can use those to pick and choose different backdrops. What we've also got here is I'm highlighting the fact that we're sitting at current, which is all good. Now, what happens if somebody's not quite such a good payer, which is often the case these days? Um, these guys are a bit later. These guys are sitting, they've got 5,500 at 90 days. So if we then have a look at the document itself, Spindle's intelligent enough to know that it's overdue. It'll highlight the fact that it's overdue and put a nice big red cheesy overdue stamp across the document. So what we're doing basically is changing the look and feel of documents based on contextual information. And we can go crazy with it. Some people do really, really advanced things with this. Some people just like to keep it nice and simple. Effectively, it's priced for something incredibly simple, but does a whole load more stuff if you wanted to. Um, like I said, we've got different companies. Um, I've got my Homestyle Retail Division, and that's going to have different relevant contextual information that's relevant to this particular company. So these guys have got links on my emails to kind of 5% discounts on stock, whereas these guys have got links to trade catalogs. If I go further up here, I'm going to have some different colors again, which is good green. This is my Homestyle Kitchen's trade division. These guys are going to have links to my trade division. Again, it's still got the same stuff going on with, it, with, the, with the station statement design. We've got the overdue stamps, and we're still highlighting the fact that we're overdue. Now, you might notice as well, we can go and grab relevant contextual attachments as well. So for example, if you're doing a statement run like we're doing here, I can go and grab the overdue invoices and attach it to the statement run that goes out. So you can get away with that most common excuse, sorry, I haven't got the invoice. That could work for purchase orders. You might want to go and grab relevant terms. You might want to go and grab relevant marketing materials at the same time. Now, at the same time as delivering documents to my customers, I might also sometimes want to copy in people within my organization. So as an example, when I'm doing a statement run, you're not going to want to send statements to all your sales teams all the time. But when a company is overdue, it might be useful for your sales team to understand they're overdue so they can be aware of what's going on. So what Spindle's done here is, you know, your salespeople's email addresses and contact information might not reside within Sun or your host application. It might be someplace else in a different table. Spindle can pick up the data from that external table as long as it's got something to reference it by. So in this case, the company name, we know who the account manager is. So we can go and pick up their email address automatically and start using things like criteria. So for example, if the account is overdue, let's go and copy in the salesperson. They again have got a different version of the paperwork, which is a generic branded copy. Smacks overdue across it in really big cheesy red writing and also highlights the fact that it's overdue. So if you think about why you do this, salespeople often moan that they're trying to sell to people that we in finance have put on stop or put on hold. It's good for them to be aware of what's going on if people are going on stop. Okay. We've done a bit of emailing with different design backdrops, with different attachments, and different relevant contextual information. We can also then deliver in different ways, and the documents can look differently depending upon how we're delivering it. So we can also fax documents. This was the same statement batch I just did, but in this case, it's going to look slightly different because Spindle's intelligent enough to know that if we're going to be delivering something by fax, we don't want it to be full color with complex kind of watermark images behind it. We want it to be nice, clean and very simple. So when it gets sent to the fax machine at the other end, it's going to be legible. So it's intelligent enough to do that. OK, what we'll do is we'll do one more document type, and then we'll kind of hand back to Paul to kind of do a wrap up. And then if you like, we can do a bit of a return on investment to work out the sort of savings you can see by using Spindle. So Paul, what sort of document do you want me to do now? Should we do a purchase order? Let's do a purchase order. So same yeah, process sounds good. before. Same process. I'm just going to print this batch of POs off. Um, Spindle's also got this thing called Spindle Pro as well, which I've not talked about yet. Spindle Pro allows you to kind of interact with it if you want to. So you can have Spindle Pro Auto, which means things just ping straight off, or we can then start telling it manually what we wanted to do. 
We're not going to do that for now. We're just going to use the automation and go OK and ping it straight off through the door. So literally immediately we've got some POs coming off now. And what this is doing is it's picking up more contextual relevant data. So as well as picking up things like the customer's name, uh, my suppliers, sorry, my suppliers name, I should say, time, date stamp, we're also picking up things like the delivery information. So if you have multiple depots, multiple sites, Spindle can pick up that data and go and grab me relevant attachments for that. I'm ordering quite big stuff here. It's a kitchen company, and I have different depots, some of which are difficult to get to. So for example, if I look at my purchase order, it's a straightforward purchase order, which looks pretty normal. Well, I think it's quite nice, but I would say that, um, which could if you want to have the relevant terms and conditions on the back. But what we've also done is, because we know it's going to be delivered to Henley Park, Spindle can go and grab the Henley Park attachments, which in this case is a document which is going to be sent to the delivery people, saying, here's Henley, site, Henley Park site instruction, here's when it's open, here's a little Google map telling me when things can be delivered and how big things can get through that area. So we can go and grab pretty much any attachments you want. Some people might say, I'm an import-export company. You might have specific import and export documents that relate to a particular document type. We can go and grab them without too much hassle at all. And again, some of these are going to go by fax. So I've got my invoices and POs going by fax in exactly the same format. Cool. So I think I've given you a bit of an overview. I mean, I've done the same thing a few times in slightly different ways. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview as to what we can do with Spindle. Um, like I said, if anyone needs to see a more in-depth demonstration, we can kind of do those one-to-one -one if you like. But what I'll do now is I'll, I'll hand back to Paul, and thank you for your time. Over to you, Paul. Thanks very the much, Tom. Thank you very much indeed. I've pinged you the control, Paul. That's great. I've got that back. Okay, well, thanks very much, Tom. That's been a really useful overview. Um, I mean, we at SAP, I think this is a really useful product. We have had other products available before that have been very limited to just one particular document output. So as you can see here, really what we're, what we're trying to show our users and customers is that it's for many applications. So clearly um, it works with any versions of Sun Systems, Sun Systems 4 or 5, and indeed uh, from Vision or Q&A if you're using that. And of course it will support multiple uh, document outputs as well. So um, purchase order statements, remittances, you might have a number of these that are all behaving in slightly different ways. So what we want to move on to now really is just to show you a little bit about how uh, the sort of costings work. First of all, I'm going to work through um, just move this slide on. An example of the types of cost savings. Now this uh, screenshot that you're just seeing here, um, Dracer have a very useful uh, return on investment or ROI calculator that you can use for yourself. So I've just done a, a very uh, modest example, if you like, of um, an indicative company that's going to send out, or does send out at the moment, about 200 uh, invoices. So there's a number of document types that we can select here uh, as examples, invoices, remittances, and perhaps a few orders. And this is per month. And then we've got a sliding scale here of Currently, what ratio or proportion do we uh, distribute by post, and what do we think might be able to go out uh, electronically? So you can play around with these figures. Um, just as an indication, we're looking at potential savings here down the bottom of uh, just over £400 a month, or around £5,000 uh, per annum. So as I say, you can uh, play around with this and work out your own sort of savings. In terms of investment, though, just to sort of contrast that, I'm going to go through a couple of examples of um, what sort of typical project costs might be. If you want to use this um, calculator for yourselves, you can just go to this rubber desk. We'll be sharing this set of, set of slides after the session, and you'll be able to click on the hyperlink there. So if we have a look at um, some example costs. Now, with any um, project, there's usually three main costs that we need to consider. There's the software, which is normally a one-off uh, license, and Spindle Pro is purchased per, per PC or per device that is being used. So you can purchase just a minimum of one, and if that was the case, your investment would be around £870 as a one-off license fee. There's also a uh, second cost, which is for uh, support and, uh, and for maintenance and upgrades. Uh, for the first year, 
uh, based on one PC, we're looking at an annual cost of 316. And then what I've assumed here is that we're going to take um, some services from Sapphire to help implement it in terms of inst installation, doing some setup and training, perhaps for uh, one or two uh, document output types. So I'm going to put a day of services in there. So we're looking at an investment total of around about just over uh, £2,000. So if we're looking at the example we gave before, at the annual saving uh, of £5,000, we're looking at ROI being achieved in under six months for a typical project. Clearly you would have the ongoing cost of support, um, but I've seen there were no further ongoing costs uh, for software or for services. Um, so that's a sort of simple, very simple example. But even if we up that, even if we increase it to say, well, actually we want to have uh, five PC licenses. Here we're looking at an initial one-off license investment of just under £2,000. Our annual support cost uh, would then go up to about 706 and Again, I'm going to assume here we're going to do a few more document outputs. So, you know, two, three, or four outputs, maybe a couple of days services to help get those uh, set up, get you trained uh, and everything implemented. But even then, when your investment is uh, 4640, with our annual savings at 5000 again, we're looking at an ROI being achieved within, uh, within a 12-month time frame, which I think in today's climate is uh, very attractive indeed. Okay, so just to summarize what we've shown you, um, we're clearly looking at, uh, in terms of benefits, ideally reducing uh, reducing the costs to the business of those, but also helping you create a more professional image. I know some of you use uh, older versions of some systems where the output is fairly limited and you're pretty reliant on uh, pre-printed stationery. But equally, if you're using later versions of Sun Systems 5, um, it's much easier to, uh, to alter these professional images and templates um, with Spindle itself. So we're looking at lots of different savings in terms of time uh, and also waste and money, but also some sophisticated functionality around uh, variables, as Tom shown, by outputting different document types to different customers based on different information. So it's a very intelligent product um, at its heart. Now this was just an overview session today. Uh, for that last sort of 30 minutes, but if you want any further information, then do uh, give us a call here at uh, Sapphire Manchester. Uh, we've got myself, Paul Caldine, and uh, Jonathan Mould, the two account managers based out of this office. So you, you can contact us for any further information.